Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to take it in a bit of a different direction. We are going to talk about weight loss because there is a serious correlation between depression and being overweight. Um, And a lot of it is causation too, but definitely correlation for sure. And I mean, of course, there's always many different reasons for things. But one obvious one is that when we feel depressed, we stay in bed or and don't work out and we overeat and we it's not like we're overeating healthy foods we're overeating ice cream and chips and <laughs> candy right so i'm going to talk today a little bit about the problem that we face in weight loss and especially maintaining weight loss um and how we can overcome that with our unique position of also having depression Um, I mean, I could sit here and tell you guys about how processed foods um, are bad for you and how people can lose lots of weight by cutting sugar and flour. I could tell you how I lost 36 pounds by switching to a whole foods plant-based diet, Um, losing, let's see, I lost 26 pounds in the first three months and then 12 pounds in the next three months. I could tell you all about that, but I don't think that that is what is going to be most beneficial to you. I think that most of us already know what foods are good and what foods are quote unquote bad. I think we know what the doctors suggest as far as my plates and um, like heart healthy exercise and all of that. I think we've all heard it. I think the unique problem for us is not that we don't know the correct way to do it, but that we can't make it work for us. We either can't lose the weight at all, or we lose the weight and then we gain it back. So here's the real problem, you guys, is that we're eating to cover something else up. Now, that can be an array of different things. Sadness, boredom, stress. Um, it could be like <laughs> like looking in the mirror and be like, oh, I look gross. I'm going to go eat something and that'll make me feel better. Like, it could even be that, right? It could even be covering up what we think is hunger. But our bodies are so like distorted and messed up and so they're confused our bodies are so confused that we have a hard time even just deciphering what is hunger and um that that's the problem is that we're covering something up we have this desire um to feel better we have a desire for food we have a desire for the dopamine hit that we get from comfort foods right and pleasure eating So the problem is not knowing what to do, what to eat, when to exercise, how to exercise, all of that. The problem is learning to have control over that desire and to understand ourselves and what it is we're trying to cover up so that we can solve that problem so we no longer have the need to cover it up with food. Okay, so we need to work on our desire and our underlying issues rather than just the symptom, which is the food and the being overweight. So here's here's what's really crazy, you guys, is that every diet that's out there works, okay? (laughs) If it didn't work, people wouldn't do it. Um, The keto diet, the grapefruit diet, the <laughs> um, vegan diet, uh, what's that one that Marie Osmond does? Anyway, they all work, you guys. The problem is, is they're not sustainable for the reasons that I've said before and also because they take a lot, like the way we go about it is a lot of willpower. 
right? Like I really want this delicious food over here, but I'm going to make myself come over here and eat this food that doesn't taste good or I don't like it because I want to change my body. I don't think my body's worthy and I need to just grit my teeth and white knuckle through this, right? But we reach a point where that willpower depletes, okay? We only have a limited supply of that. And then we, uh, like, we might lose all the weight and then go off the diet and then gain it all back. Or we might get partway through it and then totally just binge eat, right? Like, I've suffered through this all week. I deserve a cheat day. And then, and then it never works. Because that desire, I mean, the desire is just so strong and the willpower is depleting. Okay. So, and, and also like food alter our, alters our brain, especially sugar alters our brain the same way um, other addictive, addictive substances alter our brain. Right? Like <laughs> Britt Castillo, she is so funny. I love her. So... <laughs> Like if you are addicted to heroin, per se, let, let's say you're addicted to heroin, it said that all they have to do to get an urge to have to shoot up some heroin is to just see a needle or to just be in a place where they've done that before or um, see somebody else who looks like they've been like anything they see that reminds them that, that will trigger this strong urge to have another hit of heroin. Well, we have what <laughs> Brick Castillo calls pretty little food porn all over the place, right? <laughs> we see pictures of food and commercials of food and there's food everywhere and we can smell it when we drive down the street. And yeah, pretty little food porn everywhere. So you can imagine just how hard it is to resist that strong urge and desire to eat because it's something that we've always done. It's something that we love. It's something that's brought us joy um, because we get that dopamine hit. But it has this horrible negative consequence that we don't enjoy. The being overweight, the feeling sick, headaches, migraines, um, other health issues, right? So like a heroin addict, we know we want to stop. There's certain things that we just shouldn't be having. Um or we're having too much of, but unlike a heroin addict, we have to have food, right? So then we're like, where do we draw the line? How am I supposed to start and then stop? How on earth can someone just eat one cookie, right? So here's the solution, you guys, in a nutshell. You need to fix your life really like dig down, figure out what is causing the pain that you're trying to cover up. Like, what is that pain? How is it being caused? How do we caused? How do we fix it? Okay. While strengthening your mind. Okay. To remove the desire for the foods that you don't want in your life. And guess what? That's going to be different for everyone. Because like I said, every diet work, it works. The key is finding out what foods work for you. There's totally a way to do that. It's called the scientific method. <laughs> and I'm actually going to do a whole training on this, you guys. I'm, I'm going to have it out this week on Wednesday on my um, group page. So I'm going to put this in the the link in the notes, but it's loving life to stop despite depression. It's a free Facebook group. Okay. So look that up. So we're going to do, a, I'm going to do a whole training on this, but that's what it comes down to work on what's causing the pain. What are you hiding? What are you hiding from? I mean, strengthen your mind, remove the desire. Okay. So there's some questions that you've got to ask yourself, like, what is driving me to eat? What feeling is driving the action of overeating? Which is giving you the result of your current weight or your current health problems. 
okay? What is really broken so that we can treat the cause of being overweight rather than the symptoms of being overweight? So that the what's causing you to overeat rather than just treating the symptom, which is the being overweight, right? Well, it's easy to treat the symptom. You just go on a diet. But like I said, you get so far and then you gain it back. We've got to treat the cause of the eating. And while we do that, we, we do, we go on a quote unquote diet. I don't really like to think of it that way because it has a really negative connotation. It also implies that at some point you're going to stop. Um, I like to think of it more as a lifestyle change. Like there are foods out there that your body cannot process. Okay, so let's think about an alcoholic. This is a great analogy, okay? So people say like, you have to eat, so losing weight is hard. It's like, well, you have to drink too. You do, but you don't have to drink alcohol. Your body was not designed to process alcohol, okay? So you do have to drink. You have to drink water. You don't have to drink anything else, right? So there are certain things like sugars and processed foods, and I'm sure you know the list, that your body was not designed to process. Your body, it's making your body sick. If it helps, you can think about it as even being allergic to it right? So if you're allergic to something, it means that it's hurting, like that specific thing is hurting your body in some way that you should not have it. Maybe ice cream is hurting your body. Maybe you're allergic to it. Maybe. Just think about it. So anyway, sorry, while we're, we look for the underlying cause what is driving you to eat? And the easiest way to uncover that is to stop eating the crappy foods, right? So there's going to be, there's going to be this withdrawal. You're going to be like, okay, I'm knocking out all these bad foods for me. And you're going to get so much emotion that comes up. And guess what? That's the emotion that's driving you to eat. And that emotion is coming from a thought. Okay, something like, I hate my body, or my job is too stressful, or I don't have time for this, or um, whatever it is for you, okay? So when you stop the eating of the bad foods, that is what brings up the cause. That's what helps you identify the cause. You just have to pay attention to what comes up for you. So just to recap... The problem is not that you can't go on a diet or you can't lose weight. The problem is the desire for food, the desire to cover up the negative feelings, whatever they are. The solution is to stop the bad foods long enough for all the negative emotion to come up, learn how to process through that negative emotion, understand what's causing it while training your body and your mind, well, really training your mind to have control over your body, okay? So that's in it in a nutshell. Definitely get on Facebook, go to Loving Life Despite Depression. It's a free group. Um, and fill out the questions for that, and I will in let you into that group, and you'll be able to see the training on this on Wednesday night. I'm planning on having it up by three o'clock mountain time. So if you guys have any questions on that, you can definitely contact me. Um, and thank you guys so much for listening. Talk to you guys next week.